Good evening, ladies. I think Solana is one of the best risk to reward opportunities in crypto at this very moment. It's going through quite a bit of a dip. Uh, maybe it got a little bit ahead of its skis, hitting $200 even before the halvening. But right now, I think Solana is the easiest 10x opportunity in the entire crypto space. I think anyone who's denominating their portfolio in Solana or has Solana as their main bag is going to outperform the majority of crypto portfolios. Now, obviously, Solana has exploded in price, in users, in adoption, in TVL, since we we're hammering the table on it when no one was talking about it like last summer, almost a year ago at this point. But even still, at these prices, I think Solana is undervalued. Solana is underappreciated and it's going much, much higher. I think $1,000 is probably very likely for Solana and potentially a lot higher than that. But even still, even if it only gets to 500 to 1,000 that most people are anticipating, I, I'll still be happy. But I think Solana will surprise people to the upside. And I want to explain exactly why in this video and all the updates that has happened for Solana uh, recently. Because as you know, as you probably saw, there was an outage of Solana about a month ago, which kind of kicks you know, the team in the ass to get some of these updates get some of these improvements done in time and they've like there's continually updates on the solana blockchain and they're you know really helping the blockchain flourish and become much much better over time so i just want to remind you of the mission of solana the actual mission of the solana is to put the nasdaq on the blockchain it essentially wants to be the financial rails of the entire planet now do i think it's going to achieve that target of course not, but even if it just captures a portion of all financial transactions on the planet, that's enormous upside. Like it, it can definitely be the financial rails for almost all deep in networks. Almost uh, potentially a lot of payments worldwide can be facilitated on the Solana blockchain, NFT trading, stock trading eventually, uh, and of course, crypto trading. Of course, all of this crazy growth in TVL and users, like you can see some of the charts here, all of this is a lot of this is coming off the back of first of all like this whole meme coin narrative this meme coin trading which went absolutely berserk on solana for the last six months and yeah we actually called them like i said this multiple times in my videos and on twitter that i thought meme coin trading was going to like end up on solana for this cycle this was well before anyone even had a phantom wallet i was saying this and yeah, it's quite obvious in hindsight why I don't really need to explain why meme coin trading is going to be much, much better on Solana. But uh, I did not expect it to happen so suddenly or to the extent that I actually did. But, you know, being ahead of the curve that time allowed me to get whiff early, allowed me to get Bowden early, like a, a few meme coins early. And essentially, my thesis allowed me to be in the right place at the right time. So once all these meme coin traders, once all these people shifted over from Ethereum and tried out Solana, they realized the UX is amazing. It's actually better than a lot of Web2, let alone web other Web3 chains. It's much better than other Web3, web3 chains. But, you know, it's rivaling Web2, like the lights of Tensor, G Jupiter, uh, Phantom, just miles ahead of any other chain in terms of ease of use. So once you get a taste for that, you don't really want to go back. And the other thing is, like, when you're onboarding a normie in six months time, they're like, oh, I want to try a crypto. I want to come on chain. I want to trade meme coins. Where are you going to send them? Are you going to send them to base? Maybe. Are you going to send it to ETH? Definitely not. You're probably going to end up send sending them to Solana. You're like, try out Phantom. You want, to, you want them to have a good impression of crypto. And they'll go and try Solana. If they try Solana, they'll be like, oh, this is really fast. This is really easy to use. This is great. But if you get them to try Ethereum, they're like, why is this $50 for a swap? This is crazy and clunky and I don't really understand what's going on here. So if all of you are going to onboard your normie friends, most of you are going to onboard them onto Solana. I've already onboarded a few people onto Solana myself and I haven't onboarded anyone to ETH really this cycle. So uh, like I do think the meme coin hype has probably died down now. Everything's dumping a bit. I think this meme coin cycle is over. We've already had two big meme coin cycles so far in this entire crypto cycle, but I definitely don't think it's the last meme coin cycle. I think there's at least two more and the next one or two are going to have retail, like real, real retail joining. And, you know, they're going to be much, much crazier than the last couple of meme coin seasons that we've had already. If you agree with me that people are going to be trading, even more people are going to be trading Solana meme coins in the future, 
what how does that benefit the price of sol like the transaction fees on sol are so small like firstly like th yeah there's going to be a lot of transactions of sol there's going to be a lot of activity and 50 percent of those transaction fees are going to be burned but even still that's you know somewhat negligible almost negligible at the moment like the amount of fees on solana are still quite small even though there's a lot of activity because the fees are so cheap on solana like this the burn from those transaction fees is still very very small and not going to have a huge material impact on the price of sol but potentially when there's millions and millions of people trading meme coins on solana and potentially tens of millions or even a hundred million people in a year's time then that could have a real impact that fee burn but some other ways that meme coin trading could have a positive impact on the solana price is that say i wanted to buy with uh, i'm a normie I swap my US dollars for, if I want to trade on chain, I can't trip by with, or let's say a meme coin that doesn't have a centralized exchange exchange listing. So if I want to buy this on-chain meme coin on the Solana network, the first thing I'm gonna to have to do is buy Solana using fiat. So that's going to increase the price of Solana if loads of people are doing it, because they're all going to have to buy Solana, and that obviously is gonna pump the price of Solana, and then they'll send the Solana to their phantom wallet, and they'll exchange the Solana for whatever meme coin they want. And th them selling the Solana for the meme coin doesn't affect the price of Solana versus fiat. So I don't think many people think about that, but you know, you're essentially locked in the Solana ecosystem, the Solana network. Even if you hold no Sol, because you first bought Sol with fiat, you're increasing the price without selling it on the way out. So obviously that's gonna have a greater impact on the Solana price over the next year but obviously also on the way down when everyone's trying to sell their meme coins they have to first sell it into solana and then sell the solana for usd or euros or whatever so you know it's a double-edged sword but in the short term as in over the next year when people are buying meme coins it's going to be a boost to solana's price the other fundamental boost to solana's price as driven by meme coin trading is that all of these meme coin launchers all, all these launches all these devs they need to first burn some liquidity or they need to lock some liquidity so they have to raise you know 10 grand or 20 grand of solana and they'll just burn that or lock it for a year or lock it for five years and that's solana that can't be sold then so <clears throat> with all of these launches there's a lot of solana that's just getting burnt or locked and can't be accessed over the next however many years and even this Slurf dev, maybe more things like this happened. You saw with Slurf, I think he burned $30 million worth of soul and didn't even put it into the liquidity pool, just completely <laughs> just completely sent it to a burn address by accident. So potentially more things like that will happen. Another fundamental reason that meme coin trading on Solana is going to help the Solana price is, well, this is a quote from Kyle Zamani. He believes that the way to value layer ones or smart contract platforms is using the MEV is the only metric that matters. So MEV is minor extractable, extractable value. So it basically essentially means if there's any arbitrage or anyone willing to pay extra to get their transaction ahead of someone else's, that's what MEV is. That's like basically tips for the miners and those miners get extra soul for essentially letting people bump the queue in the transaction block and take advantage of arbitrage opportunities and as you can see solana is on the same order of magnitude or almost the same amount there's almost the same amount of mev on solana as there is on ethereum right now and obviously ethereum still has like a, a 5x the market cap of solana why is that a fundamental reason why does that help the solana price well it more so like if you're a holder of solana it's likely that you're staking solana and with basically all Solana stakers are getting uh, a cut of the MEV rewards as well. So if you stake with Gito Sol, you're actually getting MEV rewards for holding with Gito Sol as well. Obviously they take like 5% or something of it, but you get the majority of the MEV rewards. So there's a higher yield for holding Sol, the more MEV opportunity there is. And the more activity there is on Solana, the more arbitrages there's going to be on Solana and the more MEV profits that there will be on solana but even on a non-fundamental basis because everyone's going to be trading on solana solana is going to be getting the most attention out of any smart contract platform in my opinion 
and attention is really like the most important thing for the cycle we've already seen that for this cycle people don't really care so much about fundamentals it's all been about attention and Solana has had the most attention and probably will continue to have the most attention when it comes to smart contract platforms especially people are continue to trade meme coins and eventually people start to trade nfts and do all the other cool stuff that we're going to talk about that you can do only on solana so solana like is going to get all the attention for from the normies and they're like whoa solana is really good solana is really fast solana is really cheap i'm going to buy some solana i think it's going to go up in price like an easy enough thing to think about when you're a normie and you know it makes a lot of sense now obviously meme coin trading is going to be huge this cycle but is it the only good thing that solana has is it the only thing the only thing that solana is good for of course not there's like the whole only possible on solana is very very real and one of the main beneficiaries of only possible on solana is the deep in category so deep in is decentralized physical infrastructure networks and basically they allow networks to bootstrap their network by giving token incentives so for example there's helium hive mapper render shadow uh there's like decentralized taxi networks like decentralized ubers essentially how these work is just as an example let's talk about hive mapper so basically hive mapper is trying to map the entire world and if you're trying to compete with google with google maps like they have these cars that go around taking photos of everything and obviously that's extremely expensive to drive around the entire world with this very expensive camera gear and engineers taking photos like that's not realistic for a startup to be able to afford so what hive mapper have done is saying all anyone who's a delivery driver anyone who's who drives a lot during the day stick one of these dash cams on your car and it will record everything that's going on and we'll have really fresh up-to-date maps much better than google maps all the time and essentially they're paying them over the solana network to do that with their made-up tokens which are the honey tokens and you know there's a there's a positive feedback loop i'm not going to get into it too much but essentially you can't really do this in a web 2 world you can't send 50 cent every 30 minutes that someone's driving to like a over a bank transfer it's just not realistic whereas you can do this easily on the solana blockchain so this is uh, that's one of the examples of a deep in network and you know this is going to <sighs> deep in networks are going to be huge in this cycle in my opinion they're one of the first one of the biggest like real use cases for crypto and i think they'll have a lot of normy appeal like stick a dash cam on your car and you're going to earn money for driving around or buy this little box and put it on your roof and you're going to earn money from helium giving mobile data to people or get a little use your gaming rig and plug it into the render network and let people use your computer when you're not using it like that has a lot of normie appeal and these normies are all going to have to download a phantom wallet or another soul wallet to be able to accept payments and they're going to realize this is on the solana blockchain and that's more attention for solana as well on top of all the transaction fees that are being that are being paid by these networks another it only possible on solana niche is gaming now i don't think gaming is only possible on solana like there's obviously going to be some layer twos and potentially a lot of the transactions are going to be do, done off chain and then finally settle down to solana so it doesn't have to be on solana but solana is definitely a great choice for gaming because of fast and fast and very cheap transactions a couple of games i'll quickly mention that already b being built on solana are photo finish game that's the horse racing game virtual horse racing really really popular absolutely popping off as well as i did a deep dive on this one parallel uh, parallel colony is another game that's being built on solana where it's going to have these ai characters so you can tell the ai character what to do and it'll go and do everything for you and that's being built on solana as well the next category that Solana is pretty much dominating in right now is payments. So we've already seen that Shopify has integrated with Solana, one of the biggest internet companies in the entire world for websites, internet shop websites. We've also seen Visa, one of the biggest credit card and debit card providers in the world, integrating with Solana. And now we have a new one, which is probably the biggest uh, payment processor in the world well it is the biggest payment processor processor in the world like if you buy anything on the internet 
it's being processed through Stripe. And Stripe now is integrating with Solana. So you'll be able to buy something with USDC over Solana using Stripe. So that's huge, huge news. And they're all choosing Solana. And all of these integrations mean more usage for Solana, massive increases in usage and value transfer over the Solana blockchain, as well as more attention on the Solana blockchain. Now, the final category that we'll talk about that Solana is crushing in is DeFi. And personally, I think DeFi, like there are some arguments why DeFi could be better on Ethereum, just because it's more established and there's potentially higher liquidity at the moment. However, for someone who's not you know, borrowing a million dollars and putting two million dollars up for collateral or like hundreds of thousands, you're much more likely to want to lend or borrow on Solana where there is no transaction fees. Like if you have to borrow money on Ethereum, you have to pay like a hundred dollar transaction fee to first post your collateral and then another hundred dollars to actually borrow the money, which is a pain in the ass it's if especially if you're not borrowing like tens of thousands of dollars but with solana you can and you also have to wait like 10 minutes for any of these transactions to go through so that's why it obviously makes much more sense to do it on solana and the other big advantage of solana over ethereum like all the liquidity on ethereum is separated across the ethereum blockchain and all the different layer twos as well so there's no composability between the layer twos and ethereum Whereas with Solana, everything is composed in the one chain. So all the liquidity is on Solana. Whereas if you wanted to get cheaper fees on a DeFi platform by using Arbitrum, there's going to be way less liquidity there. I think the UX is way better on platforms like Camino and even MarginFi in comparisons to Aave. Or I haven't actually tried any DeFi platforms on a layer two, so maybe they're good, but I'm assuming they're not as good, <laughs> but I might be wrong on that one because I haven't tried it. Okay, so there's just some of the reasons why I believe Solana is going to dominate this cycle. Now I want to talk about some of the upgrades that Solana has gone through or is going to go through over the next few months and years. And we saw that Solana had its first outage in almost a year, recently enough. And the reason of that outage was already, it was already known ahead of time and they were on track to solve it on the test net but it actually crashed the network before they had a chance to fix it but now that has now that is behind us like the more stress test testing that solana goes through the better like the more people are testing out the networks like the reason a lot of these layer twos and a lot of these other chains haven't really gone down yet is because they haven't been stressed to the same extent that solana has hasn't had the same amount of users hasn't had the same amount of transactions going through it, like not pushing the limits of what they theoretically could do, whereas Solana has been absolutely stress tested now, and that's really put, lit the fire under the Solana developers' asses to get everything shipped. Now, obviously, the biggest update that we're all looking forward to is Fire Dancer. Fire Dancer is the new Solana client being written in a different programming language than Rust, I forget, I forget what, I think it's written in C. Uh, it's being created by Jump Crypto. And yeah, they're basically specialized in high-speed transactions. So they're rebuilding the entire Solana blockchain in a different programming language, which means that if there's a bug in the original, which essentially means that if there's a bug in the original Solana client, in the original code, that now there's a backup client with written in a completely different code, meaning it's they're not going to have the same bugs. So if there is a bug and Solana has to like stops working using this client, they can just immediately switch to that client, the one that's written in a different code. So it'll be extremely unlikely that they'll both have a separate issue at the exact same time. So the likelihood of the Solana blockchain going down again is going to be like minuscule it's going to be extremely reduced and from that point solana will no longer be in beta it'll be like the full they still call mainnet beta like solana is still in beta phase but once the second client is up and running then solana will be a fully fledged blockchain it's be very unlikely that it will ever go down again the other improvement that the new solana client is going to have theoretically up to 1 million transactions per second Probably not going to have that much in reality, but it's still going to be 
way faster than even Solana is today, which is you know crazy to think about when considering how fast Solana already is. Another big update that has gone through on Solana is token extensions. So this allows you to do a, cool, a, a few cool, interesting things with tokens that you're issuing on the Solana network. So you can do things like have interest bearing tokens. So, you know, when you buy a, an LST, like if you buy Gito Soul and you convert it into Soul, like the, if you buy one Gito Soul, it doesn't cost one Soul. It's a, like, it's a different amount. And this amount changes over time as it accrues interest. Whereas now you're just going, it's going to look a little bit better. Uh, and it can be, you know, you can hold 1000 USDC DJ investor coins and they can accrue a 5% interest rate over time or something like that. The things you can do with these token extensions is provide confidential transactions. So the transaction data, like f what was sent and from what address to who will still be visible, but the amount will be confidential now, which is you know, ideal for any institutions, like paying out wages or something or taking in money, they might not want that all to be like fully readable on a blockchain. So Solana right now is known as the retail chain where people come to trade meme coins. And I think in the future, it'll be the main chain where people trade NFTs. Uh, maybe people will also trade NFTs a lot on Bitcoin. But I think the ease of use of the Solana blockchain for trading NFTs is going to be really big when NFTs really come back, which they haven't whatsoever yet. It's not the time for NFTs. The time for NFTs is when everyone in crypto is already really rich and they want to flex and they want to buy NFTs. And there's going to be a lot of NFT trading because, you know, it's fast and it's cheap on Solana. I think that's what's going to happen. So just like with meme coin trading, I'm calling, I call the meme coin trading early. The main place for NFT trading in this cycle will be on Solana in probably like a year's time. So you can like potentially get ahead of the curve by getting some cheap NFTs, like the blue chip NFTs on Solana right now. But I wouldn't expect like instant gains. I think this is going to happen once the cycle top is already in or something like that. That's when NFTs really tend to pop off. Solana is known as the retail chain at the moment, but they're also, as we can see, with these token extension improvements, they're really going after institutions as well. They want institutions to build on Solana. We've already seen all the partnerships with Stripe, Shopify, etc. Really looking like it's going to be an institutional chain as well as as well as a retail chain. So I do think it's the Solana cycle. I do think Solana is the coin of the cycle. Solana went from the non-consensus bet to now it's the consensus bet. So obviously there's a little bit less upside than when it was the non-consensus bet, but the risk has been reduced now because you know it's quite obvious now that Solana is here to stay and people are using Solana. And as more people onboard into crypto, a lot of them are going to be onboarded onto the Solana blockchain. So at the moment, there is a duopoly in the smart contract platform space. There's the EVM, which is the Ethereum virtual machine, like the Ethereum ecosystem. So anything that is on the EVM, so all the layer twos like Arbitrum, Optimism, ZK Sync, and Ethereum, of course. And then there's this SVM, which is just Solana. So with the EVM, there's all this fragmented liquidity. Like if you want to invest in the EVM, there's like a hundred different layer twos that you can invest in, or you can invest in Ethereum. Whereas if you want to bet, invest in Solana, you can buy Solana. <laughs> so there's, you know, so when you add up the entire Ethereum ecosystem with all its layer twos, the fully diluted valuation is actually much higher than five times the valuation of Solana. So just another thing to be mindful of. So just to wrap up, do I have a price target for Solana? Well, if you think crypto is going to get to somewhere, if it, if it could get to 10 trillion this cycle, which is, you know, probably on the high side, but it could. And you think Solana could get to 10% of the entire crypto market cap? Because Ethereum has already been like 30% at one point. Why couldn't Solana get to 10%? That would put the price of Solana at around $2,000. So, you know, that's kind of the bullish estimate, but it is possible at least. Um, and... Price predictions, like, they're kind of stupid because there's so many different factors that go into where Bitcoin tops out and where the entire crypto market cap tops out. So anyone's guess is as good as anyone else's. But I do think the price of Solana is going to be considerably higher 
over the next year or so <laughs> so thank you so so much for watching really really hope you enjoy the video and i'll see you in the next one cheers